Hello everyone, welcome back. I know you're wondering why is someone over 60 years old trying to learn how to ride a unicycle? Well, it's to show you that if you want to get good at something, you have to do it over and over and over again, and you'll get better at it. Now, throughout my career in painting, over 40 years, I've seen a million patch jobs by DIYs, and some of them are absolute nightmares, and most of it is they get tired of sanding back. They just, there's so much sanding. You, you overfill and then you sand back and sand and sand and sand. So they get tired of it and they just start saying, oh, well, okay, that's good enough. But over your entire house, it's pretty bad. Now this isn't gonna work exactly for people that have textured walls. It's a whole different ball game then and we're not gonna go to it. And I'm not gonna go into that in this video. There's way too much involved with that. So in this video, we're going to involve just patching a flat surfaces, whether it be walls or timber, or whatever it might be, as long as it's flat. Now, I'm also on uh, several Facebook sites, DIY Facebook sites, and for a lot of people, they're getting information from other people that don't really know what they're doing. They've done it before, so this maybe it worked for them or that worked for them, and that's where they're getting their information from. If you know a painter, well, you're ahead of the ball game right there. Most DIYs don't know a painter, or at least well enough to ask a question, so they rely on all this, this misinformation. But today I'm going to show you how fast it is to do a patch with virtually no sanding whatsoever. Now I know in the title description it says no sanding. Well, if you compare what I'm about to show you to what people do in real life, it's virtually no sanding. Now there's two things I want to run past you first before we get into showing you how I patch. One is knives. We, all of these things, I've got all kinds of knives and all different kinds, makes, models, shapes, sizes. Some are stiff, some are very, very flexible. The, the knives that I normally use when I'm doing patching are what's called joint knives or jointing knives, and they've got a lot of flexibility. Can you see that? One of the tricks to patching is to always have two knives. So I've either got this knife and this knife, or that knife, or that knife. And I'm going to show you why we use two knives in a minute. The other thing I want to tell you about is patching compounds. There's, there's a thousand different brands, a thousand different kinds. Some of them are absolute garbage or just sold to the, the DIY. <clears throat> now normally what I use is called a base coat. This is typically used for drywallers, um, jip rockers, for when they're setting the tape along the joins. You've probably got Look, I don't really know, an hour working time, so you got a lot of time to work with that. Now, I don't have one on me now, but there's also one that's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to sand when it does dry. <clears throat> Here it's called corner cement. Uh, it could be called fix-all in the States. It's a little, a bit like plaster of Paris. It, it gets set so fast. You've only got like five minutes to work with this stuff, and I use it all the time, especially when I'm in a hurry and I need to paint that day. There's also what's called finishing compound. A lot of people will call it like spackle. You can get a can of spackle, it's really fine. Uh, this sort of stuff, it's really easy to sand back, super, super easy. The thing is, you can't use it for really deep, um, you can't really use it for deep indents or holes. It'll never, ever dry. And then when it does dry, eventually, uh, it'll have shrunk way back, it's got cracks through it, so you're wasting your time by using a finishing compound if you've got big, hairy cracks. The first one is screws going through the uh, door rebate, uh, and I've actually made a bigger hole so that it actually goes below the surface so that I can patch it. The other one is where, you know, you open your door and the, you, get that, you get that indent where the, the knob goes in or hits the back of the wall, and over time you got this little indent. So we're going to do that. Now even though we're patching over two entirely different things, uh, we're going to do it exactly the same way. Now before we go, now before I just head off, there's one more bonus tip, so stick around for that because I'm going to show you how to use your sandpaper properly. That's right, how to use your sandpaper properly. These are probably the two most widely used knives that I use. This is a six inch uh, joint knife and a two and a half inch. It's at an angle, it could be flat, it wouldn't matter. But you can see I've got some patch on there. It's probably a little bit not, well, it's not firm enough. You can always add a little bit more powder to that because you've got two knives. You can actually manipulate and work this material, this patch. You've got it there. Instead of taking it off like that, take it off from the side. 
more like that. You're ready to patch. Now I've already done the patching inside. The first thing I do is I, I, I squish it, I mash it in, I press it in firmly with the, um, with the knife. It kind of goes all over the place, don't worry. And then I just scrape it nice and flat, as, as flat as I possibly can. And it doesn't matter what it looks like at this point. It's going to look actually pretty terrible. It might even start to sag, especially with this being a little bit not thick enough, not firm enough. It's going to sag. Don't worry about that. Just leave it like that until it dries. Now, no matter how many times you go over it to try to make it look right, no matter how, no matter what you do, make sure you finish it flat and then don't worry about what it looks like and then let it dry. Okay, now this is really good and dry. You can notice all these striations or these little grooves, and that's because of my, uh, my knife. I've grounded it back since then, but that's not a deal breaker, that's for sure. But you don't really want that. Now before I, before I actually go over that again, this little spot here is sitting proud of the surface. So instead of sanding that back, you just take your knife and you just scrape that. until it's flat. You can check if it's flat by just putting your knife on there. And the same exact thing as yesterday. You'll also find that this will dry in a fraction of the time as it did when your first coat of uh, patch. Now with sandpaper in particular, you can use blocks. I don't think they work that well. These have got a really good place for it. As you can see, they get used. I usually buy sandpaper over here in rolls and rolls, I don't know, 100 meter rolls or whatever they might be, I'm not really sure. But look, some of you also will buy sandpaper in A4 size. Fold that in half, take your putty knife, and then cut that. And then with that piece there, you want to fold that in thirds. And then over a second time. So that's what, you, that's what you've, let, you've ended up with. Now if you just grab a piece of sandpaper, you just fold it over and you start sanding, it, it wants to slip on, on itself. But by folding it in thirds like I showed you, there's no slipping at all. So when you go to sand something, man, you can really go to town. And it's the same thing with paper like this, this is 120, this is what I'll be using. I fold it over, I fold it over again. One more time, just so that I know where to fold a cut. That's what I'll be using. So no slipping whatsoever. I can really go to town. It doesn't slip. Uh, this is what I used on those patches that we just patched. I realize you can't see the six holes that I have patched here. And just like inside that I showed you, uh, I've done it twice and now it's all about sanding, but just time this. But just time how long this is gonna take me to do six little spots. Not even a minute of sanding. I can't tell you how long it would actually take if you overfilled and then sanded, but it would take you umpteen times longer to try and actually get that mounded bit of patch uh, down to be where it's nice and flat where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to paint this now. Look, just a quick recap. Number one, use a flexible knife if you can, not a scraping blade which is very stiff. You're going to find a, a, a joint knife much easier to use. Number two is get a fairly decent patching material. It's always cheap, but I can't go through uh, some of the stuff that's really, really bad. I'll just remember from all, all my years in the business is that I've come across the ones that are so bad and so difficult to use. 
just use what the plasters and the drywallers are using. So when it actually comes to the, the actual patching, number one, just make sure you put it on there, drag your knife completely flat against whatever surface it is that you're, you're patching. Don't worry what it looks like. Number two, before you go over it the second time, just use your joint knife, go over it a couple of times, especially if it's a little sag there, and then patch. And again, it'll dry so much faster, it'll just a fraction of the time within what the first application of patching material took. And when it comes to the sanding, make sure your hand is basically flat. You may have noticed I was going here with just my thumb, but the, the hole is only as big, as big as round as my little fingernail. So it doesn't really matter. If it's a bigger area, you want a nice flat. You can do a sanding block if that helps, uh, or, a piece of, or a piece of sandpaper around a, a, a block of timber. That'll also keep it nice and flat. Now I hope that you've gotten something out of that. You can see if you've got 30, 40, 50, 100 patches, this is going to save you an enormous amount of time. Okay, one more thing. Let's say this is a gyprock wall and you pre-painted and you patch here and there. Well, there's, a, there's sort of a texture that's left from the previous paint job and it depends on the type of paint and the length of the nap of the roller. So there's a bit of a texture there and wherever it is you've patched, it's going to be super, super flat compared to the surrounding surface. And if you look down the side and there's a light coming in, you'll see this patch. It, it's not a good look, but there is a really good way around that. I'm going to put a card up here. Uh, you can look at that now. If you want to wait till the end of this video, there will be a link in the description below. And I told you, show you how to deal with those sorts of issues. So consider liking this video. Uh, the more likes we get, this means that the algor YouTube algorithms, uh, it, sends it, it recommends to other people. So if you think that other people might benefit from this type of video, then please, by all means, hit that like. Because of what you know right now, after watching this video, uh, you don't need to practice. But me, I'm going to still have to do a lot more practice on riding that unicycle. <laughs>